Good evening and welcome. You're watching We the People. I'm Rishika Barua. There's been an alert against a common Indian painkiller, methyl spas, and it's triggered quite a stir across the country. A government health body, IPC, has issued an alert over a particular constituent in the drug called mephenamic acid. I'm no expert, but we'll have experts to help us break that down. Now, this essentially is believed to trigger some kind of an adverse drug reaction. The alert says that methyl can trigger dress syndrome, which is also uh, to oversimplify a severe allergic reaction, basically. Healthcare professionals, patients have been advised to stay vigilant and water, watch out for any of these adverse reactions. Now, the reason this alert is very worrying is because Meftal is a staple painkiller that is used across Indian households. Everyone has either consumed it at some point or at least heard of it. Commonly used as a non-steroid anti-inflammatory drug, it is also very commonly used by women for menstrual cramps. Moreover, it is also prescribed to children who have a very high fever. So it is safe to say that this alert has indeed been very worrying. The methyl manufacturers, Blue Cross, has responded to the advisory. They've said that this alert has been issued as an advice to doctors and patients. Mephenamic acid is being prescribed in other countries for over four decades. Dress syndrome is very rare, they say, and is a known adverse reaction for many drugs. Now, if you're a lay person who's looking at this explanation, I'd say that this uh, explanation that the Meftal manufacturers have issued has actually deepened this controversy and worried many people even more. This controversy has raised several other questions also on the general safety and efficacy of over-the-counter drugs. Over-the-counter drugs are the drugs that you and I can just walk into a chemist and purchase and we don't necessarily need a prescription for it. The statistics are quite glaring. If you look at self-medication, it has worsened during COVID and there has been an almost 50% increase in self-medication worldwide. These are reported statistics. In 2023, the ICMR, the Indian Council for Medical Research, did a study that has now warned of rising resistance to antibiotics, which again essentially means that you're overusing antibiotic medicines, which is why they're less effective in your body. The study also says that India exhibits maximal resistance across Asia. There are also glaring statistics like one child dies every nine minutes from an illness that is caused by antibiotic resistance bacteria. These are very glaring statistics. The question we're therefore asking on We The People tonight is very simple. Are over-the-counter drugs like Meftal specifically, are they safe to use? And is it safe to pop pills without prescription? Very simple questions. This concerns all of us. Joining me, Dr. Joyita Basu. She's a general physician and co-founder and director at Doctors Hub. She's also very active on social media, disseminating verified information. Dr. Archana Dhavan Bajaj, a gynecologist. This is, remember, an issue that concerns a lot of women. We have uh, Dr. Prabhat Kumar Sinha. He was formerly with the ICMR. And we have Para Sharma, who's a global pharma business expert. So before I get to the experts, I want to ask the doctors. Uh, Dr. Joyita Basu, if I can begin by asking you the simple question that I think is on everyone's mind is, is Meftal safe? Given this advisory that's been issued, given the sort of explanation that the pharma company has issued, is it safe to consume Meftal? Thank you for having me on the show, Rishika. Uh, every medication should be taken after a after being prescribed by a doctor. I would advise nobody should be taking any medication without a prescription, number one. Number two, if Meftal has been prescribed by your gynecologist, by your GP, by your physician, then it is safe to take for the mandated number of days that they have advised and the correct dosage. We hear of people popping pills every four hourly, every five hourly, because they've not got enough pain relief. But that's not the dosage. The dosage is every eight hourly or every 12 hourly, and not more than three to four doses, days unless specified by your uh, physician. So as long as it's taken under those specified norms, I think it's all right to take if you have not exhibited uh, allergy to mephenamic acid in the past. Well, that's, I think that's really important that no drug should really be taken without a prescription and without checking with your doctor. Uh, Dr. Archana, as a, as a gynecologist, if I can ask you, I think, you know, the most common trigger, 
as far as this alert is concerned has been the fact that meftal is one of those medicines that is used very often by women to deal with menstrual cramps and that brings me back to what dr joyita said which is that you don't necessarily always consult or call up your gynecologist when you have period pain you just pop a meftal absolutely a lot of people will not bother to call a gynecologist and um i'm sure you know till this advisory came in and the dress business started nobody would really even think about this but of course we've all including the healthcare providers it has got us all thinking it has um it has you know sort of mitigated the need for us to increase public awareness which i think by far at this point seems to be the most important thing to address that we need to make our patients our little girls our young mothers all aware that every drug has a upside and a downside hmm. and the downsides need to be understood before you take the drug and hmm. of course there is no merit in taking any drug off the counter okay every medica medication no matter how trivial it is has to be taken under supervision and with a prescription okay. and there is no undermining this okay so for people who have now the other question that a lot of people have on their mind is what if i have already consumed meftal say on a monthly basis on a regular basis as, a, as an anti inflammatory or as a painkiller uh, i mean you know one can still reconsider or reconfigure whether to take it forward or not but what happens to people who've already been doing this on a regular basis you know arbitrarily looking at just mefenamic acid specifically the world has been using it millions and millions of people have mm -hmm. had it so we've really not had too many dramatic side effects up until this point and okay. i don't expect when too much drama to be associated with in the future also but saying that you know it is this 2 week to 8 week window wherein uh, typically you could exhibit symptoms of dress so okay. once you are aware of what the signs and symptoms are and if you have any of them and you have taken the drug in the past so do report it to your healthcare provider so that is point a and point b you know there the idea of uh, disseminating information like this is not to create panic the idea is to download necessary information to yes. people so as long as we are getting people to understand what is the symptom how um, you know how bad it could be in certain circumstances right. and if you have it reported i think that should be fair but two quick questions and i'll i know that you know it's it, it's very hard to give a yes or no answer but dr joyita a is it safe to consume meftal are you still say prescribing it to your patients and uh, you know the second question which is what you guys have been talking about which is this indiscriminate use i mean how do you not everybody has access to a doctor at their you know phone level where you can just message your doctor or whatever what do you do in an sos situation you know you have to just go to the chemist there are sometimes when i've heard of people walking up to chemists and chemists are prescribing the medicine saying ye wali le lijiye ye achhi hai kind of a thing how do you deal with that so point a yes we are still prescribing meftal okay. it's been it's safe we've not had any dress reported dress cases in india over whatever number of years that meftal has been around right. and as i said if we give it for a prescribed period of time at the correct dosage it's absolutely safe to take okay secondly if you have no access to a doctor in the middle of the night what would you do if it's an emergency you go to the er you don't go to the chemist and pop a pill it's an emergency you go to an er otc over the counter medications are there precisely because they are safe to take so those would okay. be paracetamol it would be some anti allergics like uh, fexofenadin allegra which is commonly taken it could be some cold medication it could be some cough syrups it could be some ointments anything beyond that if you have no access to a doctor in the middle of the night go to the er all er's are open right. er's are meant to be i mean provide medical service from 24/7 right. so go to the er okay so you are saying that there is no concern with meftal per se because like you all have explained it has a component which is questionable which is which has been used a lot but before we move on i also want to ask you since we've talked about dress particularly what is dress what are the symptoms that people need to be aware of either of you would you like so to so it's that? it's basically an eosinophilic response what and does that mean if you can break it down for the layperson okay. so yes. the body has uh, red blood cells and white blood cells so out of the type of white blood cells there is a a type of white blood cell called eosinophil which typically um sort of flares up in an uh, allergic or an inflammatory uh, response to the body 
So, uh, rise in the eosinophil count and subsequently an involvement of multiple systems. Okay. So, this could involve the lungs, the heart, the kidney. So, it's a um, serious, let's say, yes. safe to say it's a very serious condition. Yes. And what are the most apparent symptoms? Like if someone has consumed any drug that has triggered this reaction in, in that stipulated period, what are the kind of symptoms that you need to be aware of that, okay, I could perhaps, this could be dress? So, uh, rashes usually a macular papilla which is a florid red colored rash which comes all over the body there would be swelling there would be breathlessness there would be joint pain there could be fever these are the common symptoms which come up with okay rash. so I think we have uh, I hope we have at least uh, addressed the specific questions about meftal that a lot of viewers have actually asked about the safety efficacy use and you know usage going forward and what's happened if you've already used it, etc. I think both doctors have really broken that down, including doctors saying that they will continue to prescribe the drug, but as long as you're taking the quantity that your doctor is saying for the stipulated time period that your doctor is saying. Uh, if I could just take this conversation forward, Dr. Prabhat Sinha, I think this has raised two, sev two other very severe, you know, this has highlighted two other severe issues. One is the safety and efficacy of over-the-counter medications. Like Dr. Joyita Basu said, there are certain medications for a common cold cough, paracetamol, cough syrup, etc., which is okay to go to the chemist, pick up and, and take to, you know, symptomatically uh, address an issue. But what do we, how do we look at this larger self-medication statistic, you know, almost doubling in the post-COVID era where people are just bo not bothering to go to doctors or get medical advice, but are just popping pills. How do we address an issue like this? Thank you for calling, joining me with you all. Uh, first of all, any anti-inflammatory, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs should not be given straight away. It should be prescribed. And even orthopedician who uses mostly the uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, they are also very cautious about it, and they are now switching to paracetamol. Similarly, in this area, the gynecologists are usually prescribing meftal, but a meftal spas. But I think this would be very cautious about it. And as earlier, the lady was telling that uh, for a certain period of time, it should be prescribed in certain dose. Hmm. And no one should go to the counter and take the drug from the drug stored. Hmm. This should not happen and uh, it, it, it has got some side effects such as it has got cardiovascular side effects, it has got uh, gastrointestinal side effects and now the pharmacovigilance has reported about the dress. Hmm. So this is a concern but it should be cautious, it's not a very big concern or big issue that it should be wrecked up to create a sort of a fear psychosis. No, I think it's it's peoples. it's important to also clarify, uh, you know, at this point that one is not trying to create any kind of an alarm, but simply to break down what this alert means, because there are so many questions that are unanswered, and how many people, like I said, have access to informed medical opinion. So I think the whole purpose of this show is to put this story Actually, into a larger context. But I want to also ask you before I move on. I also want to ask you the ICMR study on antibiotic resistance in a certain sense is linked with the problem of self-medication and over-medication, isn't it? Do there have to be perhaps more stringent guidelines when it comes to over-the-counter drugs? How do you look at this? As someone who's formerly been associated look, with ICMR, how do you look at this? Look, this study is about the antimicrobial resistance. Yes. With antibiotics. Yes. And the antibiotics are largely prescribed even in the rural places by quacks who are not uh, qualified doctors. And still the government is accepting it. Even Ayurveda doctors are being posted in public health centers and they are prescribing antibiotics. So what is the solution? And the government has legalized. But, but Dr. Sinha, yeah, what is the solution? The solution is that it should be prescri prescribed by a competent person uh, who is holding the Medical Council of India or the National Medical Commission uh, license, okay. they should prescribe. Okay. But uh, here the population is so large that the doctors are not that much in the rural areas. So people are taking advantage of this. Okay. Well, that's a that's a larger issue that you've talked about. But Pada Sharma, if I can bring you in as a as a farmer, as the farmer voice on the show, as a business expert, 
you know, the industry image has really taken a beating in the recent year, hasn't it? I mean, if you look at this entire controversy around the Indian cough syrups, the fact that there have been questions over manufacturing practices, over, uh, you know, drug regulation in India, now this entire Meftal alert, I mean, the larger question or conversation around all of this has been that are any of the medication that we're actually having safe, and which it is, like I said. So we don't want to raise alarm, but how would you address those concerns around the safety of, of our medications? I think you'll have to unmute yourself. Thank you very much for the uh, for this uh, invitation and uh, in this panel of discussion. I have been ex we are exporting the medicines in more than 80 countries, and I have been myself traveling worldwide. So actually, uh, the case which we are seeing here is that the products are being you know uh, prescribed by the quacks, and they are also using it. They don't know. For example, in that case, if we talk about um, mephenamic acid or you know, 30 years back, 20 years back, it was just a brand. And now it has become, it has gone to the OTC level and it has gone to that level. So everybody is uh, just popping up the pills and, you know, they are saying the, this and the, that problem. So once again, as once I will again, agree, with, onus, I agree of with... Course, no, no, one second. The onus, of course, does lie, like the doctors have also explained, like, uh, uh, you know, Dr. Sina from ICMR also said that the onus, of course, lies on those prescribing the medication and those consuming indiscriminately. But at the same time, we can't really exonerate pharma, can we? I mean, given the kind of no, questions yes. that have been raised, like I said, it's 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 sown seeds of doubt, whether it's the cough yes. syrup controversy or now this alert over Meftal. No, alert of the Mef Meftal is a different subject and uh, alert on this uh, co controversy of the cough syrup is a different matter. You know, uh, there are a lot of things, there are a lot of manufacturers now the government of India is also updating and making the, the you know, manufacturing of the medicines and, uh, you know, very stringent in even impurities. And there are so many okay. other aspects of the drug manufacturing. They are uh, uh, making it, uh, you know, more stringent so that the better quality medicines goes worldwide. So those cough syrup issues are there. But hmm. now, the, now there are a lot of uh, ex exports related things going on. Government is taking a lot of uh, precautions. You know, every medicine which is now being exported for okay. like cough syrups, well, when we are talking. Right. Yeah. Okay. So okay. when we well, are many would say, no, Many would mm -hmm. say that this alert, etc., that's been issued by a government body only is also perhaps a sign of that, which is the fact that the government is being more vigilant. But let me ask the doctors, do you agree? Uh, or how do you rather look at, you know, questions that people have about the general efficacy of the medication that is available, the quality and efficacy of medication that is available. Do you have a comment to make? So, uh, specifically Meftal, efficacy <coughs> is there is good. That's why it's so popular. That's why it's being used. And that's why we are being prescribing it. It's just that it's been overused. And uh, you mentioned that doctors prescribe something, people are buying it over the counter. Chemists should not sell it. We should have some standards over there, some uh, uh, laws or liabilities with the chemist itself that they should not sell something which is not a OTC medication. Hmm. You have, they have to be careful too. Hmm. Like you have, for a reason you have medicines which are OTC, which are schedule H, H1, X. Hmm. There's a particular reason why all those medicines are under those schedules. And the ones so which are under So what's the liability OTC. there? And yeah. how do we so fix account? They have to be very, very specific. It's not just the pharma, uh, pharmaceutical company, the doctor, the patient. It's also one more, you need to add one more hmm. uh, table over, th one more uh, label over there. That's the chemist who's selling the medication. Hmm. Uh, second thing, uh, yes, I'm glad that Indian pharmacovigilance is stepping up now and uh, looking into all medications hmm. and seeing and issuing alerts. It's a good thing, yes. especially in view of all the cough syrup controversy that yes. we've had. So it's a good thing that they're doing it. Uh, having said that, Meftal is a really old uh, medication and we've used it, dress I don't. I have you ever come across dress? I have seen only one in my entire entire practice. practice. Yeah, one. I haven't seen I've any. Seen. I haven't seen any. So, uh, but it's a good thing. Overall, right. I think it's a good thing. It's good for Indian uh, health systems and for. But you know, there are there are there, there is so much conversation around this because 
on the safety of medication. I mean, there's a whole school of thought that believes that even a medication like Combiflam, which is a commonly used anti-inflammatory, is not safe and you should use it. There are doctors who prescribe it and there are doctors who don't. As a common person, again, and I'm, I'm not coming from a point of view of a person who has access to healthcare and can walk in, schedule OPD appointments, meet doctors, get prescriptions. But for the common person, it's the easiest thing is to just go to your neighboring chemist and buy whatever OTC drugs are available. How do people navigate this? You know, given the fact that there are alerts, you all are saying you have to be careful, even OTC medication, under medical supervision, duration, dosage, all of those are correct things to say. But how do people navigate this? Is there, a, is there some kind of a solution as doctors that you think would work? You know, see, it's not as simple as somebody walking to a chemist, taking a drug or not taking it. Hmm. This is something where there, there are really four bodies involved hmm. or four stakeholders, so to say. It's the government which has regulations to make and it has the onus of disseminating very important information be it through literature be it through uh, television be it through radio whatever mm -hmm. so then there is the um, pharmacopoeia which has vigilance uh, organization yes. pvpi and ipc which have been in practice and now they have become more stringent okay then there is the chemist and then there is the pharmaceutical company. So right. there are four people who have, or four stakeholders who actually have to help a common person <laughs> navigate through it. Sure. So it's not really, you know, I, you can't uh, blame somebody to, who's in pain not going to the ER and walking to a chemist. Right. It's all of us in tandem right. and the responsibility lies on each one of us. Okay. As a you healthcare know. provider, the responsibility lies on me to inform as well, many absolutely. people as and I can. I think as, as, as patients, it is, it is it, you're at the end of the day, you, know, you're, you have to look out for yourself, so you have to do whatever you can best uh, for yourself, but you know, under medical advisement or or supervision, uh, we have a young audience here as well. You have a question. Uh, yes, my name is Bhavya. I'm from Trinity College. Uh, my question is, if, as you said, the we have only painkiller one. Like from past years, we have taking meftal. If you are having menstrual cramps or uh, uh, muscle pain or etc., hmm. we take meftal. Hmm. But sometimes it's unbearable pain during hmm. cramps, so we take meftal and. As you said, we go to chemist, take. Yes. But how do we spread awareness in women or other audience, public, hmm. to take medicine in a uh, particular range, okay. not overdose? So I think I, I think this also is, is the larger question that a lot of people actually want to ask. Can you can people just continue to take meftal? Because for some people, it's a monthly affair. I mean, like she said, for menstrual cramps, when it's really bad, you just take a meftal and go to work or get on with your life. So can people continue to do that? Well, I guess to some extent, yes, because really to most people, in, to most young educated girls in India, Meftal is the panacea to their troubles. Yeah. <laughs> so to, a, to some extent, yes, you can. But I know, you know, this conversation is going to sound more like an agony aunt conversation. Mm. But there are a lot of other ways to address menstrual cramps. You know, simple things like exercising, chamomile tea, using a hot water bag. Um, using what, what have you, your lavender oils and all, these are little very simple things you could give a try and believe me, trust me, they actually work. So okay. end of the day, it's not just a mef meftal, they, there are other things which may be a little tedious to do, hmm. but do give them a try, they might be, you know, the end of your uh, troubles. Okay. I'm Anyone just else? going to add one yeah. more thing here, and if your period pains are so severe, Please see your gynae, get Absolutely. your tests done. It could be something uh, Else, underlying yes. uh, over there which needs a different treatment. I think so Jyotika, you need you've to nailed see. it. If you're yeah. having such severe pain that it's stopping you from getting on with your day's work or hmm. you know stopping you from going to school, college or at work, hmm. then you need to see a gynecologist. That could be fibroids, there could be endometriosis. Oh. I think and that's things things see, again. It all boils Absolutely. down to what the doctors agree on, which is the fact that you have to you know not indiscriminately pop pills but get medical advice and if your doctor for instance suggests that it's okay to have a medicine SOS on a monthly basis then by all means go ahead and do it but do it under medical advisement. Uh, Dr. Sinha, you know final question to you we've sort of we've sort of tried to cover broadly this this controversy around meftal but today it's meftal tomorrow it'll be another drug what advice would you give to people who are who are reading alerts of medications uh, you know, do, do these alerts essentially mean, you know, that there is something seriously wrong? Do we need to word these alerts better? Do we need to educate people better? The point that the audience member also raised about awareness. How would you look at this entire uh, story in terms of, you know, making this information more accessible, palatable and understandable for the common person? Look, 
in my what i say is that the this pharma industry should uh, be cautious and should bring out uh, along with the drugs some instructions that okay. they, they the pay first of all second the treating doctor also should take the history very meticulously because there are issues like uh, asthma related aspirin related asthma hmm. this is a breathlessness so there is a cross reactivity nsaid drugs also can cause asthma hmm. or dress like syndrome so if the doctor takes the history then this can be minimized prevented right this is my opinion first of all the doctors okay. should also be alert the prescribing drug doctors should also be alert about it okay a second a secondly that uh, any for, uh, for uh, drug store is about patient walks into the drug store they should also be cautious about it and drugs uh, should not uh, welcome those patients okay. who come straight away without prescription Okay. So these are the issues which has to be addressed by the government. All right. So I think if you can access uh, information or ad advice from a medical health professional, that is definitely your first case scenario and your best case scenario. Schedule appointments, walk into an emergency of a hospital if you really have to. Otherwise, there are just barely those few over-the-counter drugs uh, that are safe to use. But I think finally, I'll just conclude by saying that the last option available to everybody should be to go to Google. and access unverified information about drugs so please don't do that stay safe that's all the time we have on this edition we hope it's been useful for you good night and thanks for tuning in yeah thank you